Join From Beer to the Bible every week as Irvin Lee and co-host Sarah Oliveira McDonald warn others of the consequences of drug and alcohol addiction by being the voice of faith-based recovery. Every week, Irvin and Sarah help people get access to the treatment and counseling they so desperately need. They explore the depths of addiction and give practical life examples of how to recover and develop a new rhythm of living. The show is gritty, authentic, and simply raw while being rooted in the love, faith, and hope of God. Welcome to From Beer to the Bible. Welcome to From Beer to the Bible. I'm your host, Irvin Lee, and this is my co-host, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing well. And we've got one of our all-time favorite guests, Pastor Pam with us. Hi, Pam. Hi, how are you all? Uh, good, good to see you again. We're looking forward to, to see you. continuing our conversation. Uh, today's topic is how the Holy Spirit heals. How the Holy Spirit heals. Full disclosure, Sarah and I and Pastor Pam love the Holy Spirit. We believe <laughs> that he is not talked about enough for all the wonderful things that he empowers us enables us to do and does in and through us. So we are going to get into it today. So Sarah, uh, as we always do, anchor us in the word of the living God. We're coming to you today from Luke 15, four through six. Jesus was talking to the parables. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Mm, I think we all like that. And I have felt like the lost sheep. Absolutely. And the Lord certainly said, come back. And that's so important. And I think many times we forget that we've all been lost. Yeah, May absolutely. I be to addiction? but to something a lot of times. And then I think um, we talked last time about the church and some of us as Christians not always having the empathy for those who are suffering and those who are suffering from addiction. So I wanted to begin and, and talk about that a little bit, Pastor Pam. Yes, um, one of the beautiful things about the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit resides in our hearts, which he does when we receive Christ as our savior, the Holy Spirit is a promise that he will come and be with us. Now, he can come and be with us more intensely um, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's another thing to talk about, but mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is with us and he's in us. And he begins to change our heart from the inside out. I mean, read about the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5, when it talks about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all those things are going to increase in us. Yeah. And when they do, then when we look at other people, we look at them with the eyes of Christ and we begin to feel that deep compassion for their need and their brokenness and how we can be a part of helping them through that yeah. and uh, bringing life to them. And that's God's work in us. Yeah, that's what's needed. Mm -hmm. Talk a, talk a little bit about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We, we don't hear very much on that uh, in today's today's Christian world. Yes, that's true, and it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> it changes yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jesus promised that if the disciples would wait in Jerusalem, they would be filled with power. Mm -hmm. And Acts 1.8, you know, the power will come upon you and yep. you will be my witnesses in first in Jerusalem, then in Judea, then in all the world. And that's the promise that was meant not just for them, but for all of us, that there's a way in which the Holy Spirit's presence will increase on us in this thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, um, people naturally ask, well, 
okay, if I read in the Bible about that, I, I can see there are some th places where it's described, John called Jesus the baptizer in the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. But how do I do it myself? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. how do I get in on this? And, and really the answer is simple. It's just to pray and say, Lord, I see that this is part of this life. And I need the strength and the love that you want to give me. So will you fill me with your Holy Spirit? Mm. A lot of it is just believing that what's in the Bible is true and it's for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I tell you a little story about Absolutely, myself? Absolutely, please. Yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. I was already in ministry. You know, you'd like to say, oh, I was baptized in the Spirit at 10. And then years later, I went into ministry. No, I went into ministry and I still had not been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But I went to a prayer meeting one night and I was feeling the strains of ministry. And I just said, you know, Lord... I need something. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was crying and I said, Lord, I need something. Yeah. And I really remember hearing his voice say to me, get up, I'm going to help you. Yeah. And so this, this was a very popular prayer meeting. I was praying like this prior to its start. The meeting started. We all began worshiping. I was singing to the Lord. I raised my hands. And all of a sudden, it felt like I was plugged into the outlet of the universe yeah. <laughs> because I suddenly felt a great flow of intense power and heat. Yeah. And I began to sing in the spirit. And I said, wow, something has happened here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I had to become acquainted more with the Holy Spirit. Read the Bible. Yep. About Absolutely. What he does, you know, because yeah. he does many things for us. Yeah. Yes. That happened to me. That's what happened to me in treatment. I, I you know, I, I, I felt, found, saw Jesus again in treatment. We call that a spiritual experience, you know, a lot of times in recovery. And um, like you said, you know, sometimes we want that feeling again and we don't know how to find it. We just have to ask for it, though. And I have found that, yes. you know, growth through study is the way that um, I get closer and, and I feel the Holy Spirit again. And sometimes it's it's a mere prayer to ask God to, you know, show you. And sometimes it's a study and, and a Bible study. And but that's kind of, you know, I have learned I don't no one ever taught me this, but I have learned once you have discovered it and know that it's there and have been blessed by the Holy Spirit you can ask for it or you can study a little bit more to find it. And it's not going to be there every single day, all day, but you have access to it. Right. And I love yes. that <clears throat> we are supposed to equate joy because happiness comes and goes, but joy lives within us and we can always mm -hmm. find joy. And, and that is the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us don't know that. Yes. Yes. You're so right, Sarah. A lot of times we don't, we, we don't know how to identify what we're uh, experiencing. And in fact, we're experiencing the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Which is you know? joyful. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Pam, talk yeah. about the importance of the Holy Spirit in the healing and recovery process of one who's suffering from addiction. Yes. The Holy Spirit brings the power that's needed to break off that addiction. Mm -hmm. um, in the Bible, there's a verse that says, it's in Ephesians 5.18, and it says, don't be drunk on wine, yeah, because that leads to debauchery. And translation, let me translate that into English. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't, don't be using drugs, because that leads to a, a life that's no good, right? Yeah. yeah. So it says, don't be drunk on wine, that leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. And when you're filled with the Spirit, you begin to look more and more like Christ. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does is change our character. So yeah. we become more Christ-like. You know, we think, oh, if I just grip my teeth and try to be better, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's more, it's a divine thing that the, that the Holy Spirit fills us, works on our heart, changes our mind and our thinking, and just renews and regenerates us. Yes. So there's that that happens, our character changes. But as I say, you know, if we try to live a life like Christ, we're good for about five minutes yep. you know, with, on our own strength. Yeah. 
And the Holy Spirit brings power into us and love that's supernatural and divine. Yeah. The Holy Spirit equips us and teaches us and reminds us of everything that Jesus said. Mm. Yeah. So having a life filled with the Spirit is so important for a yeah. Christian person. I think a lot of times in 12-step recovery, we don't realize that that's what's taking place. Um, yes. But I have, I've seen the Holy Spirit through 12-step recovery in so many different ways, like through a sponsor being the vessel and, and sharing these experiences, the strength and the hope that got them sober makes you attracted to them and makes you want to be like them and changes you. And so that's kind of the yes. start of, of that. And, you know, we put we put these things in um, different buckets, but they are the same because people yes. talk to me in recovery circles all the time and, and God is speaking through each and every one of them, you know, and mm -hmm. I love that today I can see that. I know that's God and the Holy Spirit talking through them to give me the message that I need to hear for that day. Uh, but yes. it's, it is all around it if we look for it. Yes, absolutely. And and one of the names for the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Yeah. And when like you have said, Irvin, when you you know, when you hit bottom and your life is just so broken, um, you need to feel like there's some hope. You yeah. need yeah. to feel like somebody knows you're there and, and cares about you and is going to help you. And, and the Holy Spirit brings that feeling and that message to your heart that you are loved. Yeah. You're not forgotten. You are seen. God is here and he's never going to abandon you. Yeah. And that's that's the Holy Spirit, isn't it? That wholeness, yes. that wholeness mm -hmm. when most of us has felt empty for so long. Yes. And it's, in, and it's instant. It's pretty instant. You know, it doesn't I mean, maybe it takes a little bit longer, but once it happens, I mean, you are filled. The burden is lifted. You feel free. Um, yes. And it's it's amazing. Yes. Pam, as Absolutely. a pastor, I wanted to get your perspective on the lack of education on the Holy Spirit and then what I call the miseducation of the Holy Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. Why is that? And, and what are your thoughts? That's such a great question because it's true. Uh, there are church communities where the Holy Spirit seems very welcome. They yeah. talk about him. They, they sing songs about him. They have lots of prayer ministry and healing ministry. There's other churches where there's a guardedness. There's mm -hmm. a fear maybe yeah. that, oh, well, if we let the Holy Spirit in here, things are going to get a little cuckoo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've seen so that. it's like, okay, we'll, we'll talk Father and Jesus and yeah. the Bible, but, you know, we're going to skip around the Holy Spirit. Or there's some churches that don't even speak of Jesus and they just say God. Yes, that's true too. And, and I do think sometimes there are some, I know we put a word to this Pentecostal communities yes. that that sometimes they they do they can go off the rails you yeah. know being trying to have experiences and that can be frightening for people yeah, yeah. so there's there's a balanced place um, I'm trying to think of it there's an expression if we just have the word we dry up if we just have the spirit we blow up. Mm. But if we have word and spirit, we grow up. Oh, <laughs> there it yes, is. I like I that. That's it. good. That's good. That's good. So there's a balanced place where, yeah. you know, we're not going too far on what toward one and, and neglecting the other. Yeah. You know, we, we, we seek both. So. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. I, I think the importance of Holy Spirit is understanding. You talked about him being the comforter. He's our helper. Mm -hmm. He's our strengthener, our intercessor. So his function is so very important to not only recovery from addiction, but being right. able to live the, the life of Christ, right? Let Christ live yes. in and through us. And then to have the power to allow him to change our character. That's why I, I always, I'm not sure that we know to be filled with him and to continue to call on him and to communicate with him and then also learning to hear his voice as he leads, he guides. And it also says he's our counselor as he counsels yeah. us. Yes, he really is, you know, so marvelous. And he's God. I mean, yeah. God is father, son 
and Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I always joke because I grew up in those churches where the Holy Spirit was a little uh, frightening to people. Yeah. And they didn't want to get too heavy on the Holy Spirit. So yeah. I always joke that uh, at the end of the service, it was in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go get lunch. You know, it was yeah. kind of that. It was yeah. Like an alarm bell. You know, when yeah. I heard his name, it was time to go. Yeah. But God is so good and has led me over the years to the fullness of who he is. And if we miss out on his identity as spirit, we're missing a lot because this is the age of the spirit. This yes. Is when we as Christians need to have the help and the teaching and the, the companionship of the spirit. Mm. And, you know, I, I, the Holy Spirit is so wonderful and kind. And if I can, I want to just tell you a story yes, absolutely. Uh, from a recovery center. Uh, we had had a lesson on healing one night, the, the whole group of everybody in the community gathered. And there was a guest pastor who spoke about healing. But I felt personally that her message had been kind of uh, lukewarm, a little careful. I thought, yeah. you know, healing is a wonderful thing. And it yeah. happens all the time still. So when we went downstairs to our small group, I said, hey, let's not just have had a lesson about healing. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, here I had this group and it was it's a small group, but it was about 20 people. And they were in varying stages. Some were new to the community. Some uh, weren't sure about God at all. Some had already been or have, were becoming devout Christians. So it was a mix of people. But I said, who in our group uh, needs some healing? And this woman who uh, had had a surgery on her ankle, she said, I need healing. And I stand up all day and I'm in a lot of pain. And I said, well, sit down. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said, hey, everybody gather around her. You know, if you can touch her shoulder or her arm, uh, that's great. If you can't touch somebody else's shoulder or their arm, you can be sure you say, is that okay? May I do that? Yeah. And I said, then let's all just speak some healing words over her, you know, like, ankle bones be uh, made new tendons be made new uh, pain be gone in the name of jesus just simple things yeah and yeah. they they all did it some rolled their eyes like oh i don't know <laughs> you know yeah. but they all participated a couple of weeks later i i was gone for a couple of weeks i came back and i sat down with them and i turned to her and i said hey how are you feeling and she said oh much better and just to check it, you know, she crossed her, her sore, what had been in her sore ankle over her knee, and she started just resting her hands on it. And then she just let out a yell and she says, and the metal is gone. I can't feel the metal in my ankle anymore. Uh -huh. And, and, uh, she was shocked. I mean, we didn't take an x-ray. I yeah. don't know. I hear of those healings where metal disappears from people's bodies, but we didn't take an x-ray or use a metal detector, Yeah, but clearly her pain was less. And it had happened when this group prayed for her. Mm -hmm. And here's my point. It's just that the Holy Spirit is so kind. This wasn't a group of, we go to church every single Sunday and all of us believe and we've read the Bible cover to cover. That yeah. wasn't who was in that group. Yeah, no. It was a mix of people and all in recovery. And they had laid hands on her and now she could stand on her leg and work without pain. Mm -hmm. So that to me just demonstrates the goodness and the kindness of God. That and he, he works through us, whether we got the program together or not. Yeah. You know, and, he he and the loves us. I was going to say the beauty about that um, in my experience, and, and it talks about this is when we come in three or more there too, he is. And, and other people were benefiting from that too. It wasn't just the person that was hurting. Everybody was seeing the power and experiencing yes. that power, not just right. the person that was hurting. Yeah. And, and seeing that, that God was saying, I will work through you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're young in this, but I love you. And yeah. I want you to be amazed by who I am and how I feel about you. Yeah, so you're right, Sarah. It was a healing for everybody involved, including me. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, other people seeing those miracles me. allow them to believe more. Yes, right. And many times they'll say, well, I wasn't so interested in Jesus, but now. Right, yep. <laughs> yeah. Now, wow. 
Yeah. Well, a lot of what you're saying we talk about in 12 step recovery is giving, giving it back, right? We've gotten sober mm -hmm. and then the 12 step is giving it back. And then we are blessed by that. And so, you know, we, we should do that in all areas of our life and, and Christians too. And I love that you are doing that. You are, you know, going out and helping others and being blessed yourself by those experiences and those miracles. And so it makes you want to continue to do it more and more and more. And that's mm -hmm. what that's what it's about, because when we're getting out of ourselves and we're helping other people, we are truly filled with happiness and joy and peace that only yes. only you can do by doing that. And, you know, when we're in our addiction, we're so wrapped up in self and self-centeredness and all the the evil, you yeah. know. Yeah. And yes. One of the things I tell anybody, whether you're suffering from addiction or you're struggling in life with different circumstances, is go help somebody. Yep, absolutely. Just mm -hmm. go help somebody. When I'm down, when I'm out, and I got a major problem, yep. I just go somewhere and try to talk or just help somebody. So uh, I wanted to share that. And then Pastor Pam, talk about how having those who have suffered from addiction uh, and the value they can add to your church congregation. Mm -hmm. You know, their stories are so powerful when they give their testimony and they say, you know, I, I was so lost and yeah. so alone and so broken. And Jesus came. Uh, I was the one sheep. Yeah. And I see now that he came after me and I love him so much. And I give my life to him. Their testimonies are so rich and powerful. And when people hear that, they are reminded of how powerful what Jesus did on the cross is. Uh, his blood shed for us. There's power, wonder working power in the blood, right? Yeah. And when they hear a testimony from someone from recovery who has gotten through it, who is not just clean and sober, that's, that's great. Yeah. But what we're talking about is utterly transformed, a brand new person yeah. who now hungers for different things, lives a different way. You know, someone who's totally healed body, soul, and spirit. When you hear that, you know, oh my goodness, God is real yeah. and he is powerful and he is for us. Yeah. And yeah. so they bring such a wonderful dimension to the church. And I've always seen people in recovery, uh, once they start to get on the, the road of a new life, they are tremendously um, desiring to be servants, you know, to, to give back mm. and help out. Yeah. Wow. Talk about, um, as you work with those who suffer from addiction, the Holy Spirit and his role in your ministry as you minister to those who are suffering. You know, I could not do what I do without the power of the Holy Spirit and with his, just his constant companionship. Yeah. Um, you know, I do personally experience him as a great consoler mm -hmm. because as, as I've done this work in recovery and gone down and listened to the stories of people, there have been times, honestly, when I, I have driven home out of that neighborhood and thought, oh my goodness, that yeah. story I heard today, ugh, it's going to take me a minute to get over that because yeah. it was so awful what happened to that person when they were growing up or whatever, you know? And so the Holy spirit not only helps me to let go of that and give it to him, um, but he comforts and consoles me, you know, because it's hard to see people suffering, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's yeah. difficult. So in order to be able to handle that, we need the power yeah of god we need the divinity of god filling us to give us the strength to go back and keep doing it and because it'd be easy to say well i don't want to drive into that neighborhood anymore you know i <laughs> yeah i, I want to go home put my feet up i'm done you know yeah. it's just too hard but the holy spirit uh, lifts that burden you know cast all your cares on him because he cares for you mm -hmm. he takes that away takes away the the sadness and then he fills you back up. He fills me back up so I can go in uh, 
and just love people. Yeah. And have have the capacity to love. Yeah. yeah. That makes me think of in the counseling world, we talk about secondary trauma a lot. And so there's professions that suffer from um, substance abuse because they're hearing secondary trauma, lawyers, uh, doctors, uh, nurses, uh, firefighters, policemen, a lot of them don't even realize that they're hearing these stories and they're seeing these things. Um, and then what, what else are they to do at the end of the day, but to, you know, uh, you know, clear their minds with a substance. And so a lot of them end up getting addicted to drugs and alcohol because of that secondary trauma. And I, I love that, you're giving a simple solution and i think i'm going to start using that it's like call upon the holy spirit to help you with some of that because you have tools and not not many of us know how to access those tools mm -hmm. yes i so agree with that you know when you're really sad because you've heard a sad story or, yeah. or seen something awful um yeah just to say lord this is way too much for me you know can you take this off me yeah. you carry it uh, so I can keep going in your name. Yeah, yeah well, absolutely. Pastor Pam, talk about Jesus in the Attic. We've got a few minutes left. I want you to talk about the book and then let everyone know where they can reach you and then give us some words of encouragement uh, as we close. Okay. Well, Jesus in the Attic came out of Bible studies that I developed for the Healing House community in Kansas City. We okay. would run a, a program called Alpha, which mm -hmm. is a, a program that teaches about Christianity. Um, we learn about Jesus. Why did he die? Who's the Holy Spirit? Why should I pray? Why is there evil? What's the Bible? They're just basic topics. And we have run that continuously at the Healing House. But there would be, oh, you know, an interval in between each session where I would develop four or five weeks of teaching, say, on um, how can I get over rejection or how can I deal with fear? Yeah. And so I thought, well, you know what? I think I'm going to put all of these into a book. I felt yeah. God asking me to do that. Put yeah. all of these, not all, <laughs> there's a lot of topics, but 12 topics I put in the book and tried to give some background. What is a person in recovery feeling mm. in terms of fear or rejection? And then a prayer for her. For the person reading the book who might go then and minister to people in recovery and then a sample talk what would i say if i was standing in front of a group of people in recovery you know yeah and, and my advice on the book is let it be a model for you and then you take it from there if you think of a new topic that's not in the book but yeah. you run into a lot in recovery how can you think about the needs how can you present them that's the idea of the book. So it's Jesus in the Attic, 12 Bible studies for people getting free from drugs. And it's available on Amazon. It's uh, actually published through Ingram Spark. So you can get it on all kinds of platforms. Um, and it comes in Spanish too. All right. Awesome. Yeah, we're yeah. excited. We're really excited about that. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna so have to take that back to my recovery group and see if we can't do that um, in our next session. So it sounds amazing. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that. So there, there is the book. And then I have a website, Pam at Pam Morrison Ministries. Oh, excuse me. That's my email, Pam at Pam Morrison Ministries.com. And the website is Pam Morrison Ministries.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, so there's lots of ways to connect with me. And I always welcome people to write through the website, Pam Morrison Ministries.com. If you've got a something you're struggling with you need prayer just write me and I, I will write back and hopefully give you some help so pam thank you for well, all the work that you're doing and for blessing us today with a little bit of education on the holy spirit i know i was i was blessed by your message today and just kind of talking a little bit more in depth about the power of the holy spirit and how we can access it so i appreciate you and your time today and continue to to bless you and your ministry and all that you're doing. Thank you so much. And I'm so blessed by being with you and seeing what you are doing to help people and reach their hearts. There is hope. There is no person too far gone for God to reach and restore and uh, 
bring about their original purpose, make them shine like gold. So never quit. Don't quit five minutes before your miracle, right? Uh, Absolutely. A amen. We'll take that. It's a good word. Yes. <laughs> well, everybody, don't uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe at FromBeerToTheBible.com. Thank you again, Pam and Irvin, for being here today, and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in to this week's From Beer to the Bible. Make sure to tune in next week when Irvin and Sarah gift you with even more addiction recovery information. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, we're always there for you.